Time to make the perfect marshmallow. When is Walnut going to get back here? Ah oh, man, my marshmallow burst into flame. I need to find a way to control these conditions better. I know. Let's build a marshmallow rotisserie. Let's get to it. This build is for the Element 14 Open Arduino Challenge. Walnut and I will talk you through it. The first thing we did was prototype. A major component was the motor. We needed one that had good torque and we could control the speed. So we modified an old servo motor to work as a high torque DC motor. I did this by removing the circuit board inside, cutting off its stop pin, and removing its potentiometer. An Arduino Uno was used to test the resistors and transistors to develop the circuit. The code is pretty straightforward. It reads the value of two potentiometers connected to analog pins. One potentiometer is for the user speed and the other is for the desired cook time. The speed value is scaled for an analog write command which will pulse voltage to a transistor. The transistor switch is 9 volts on and off to give the effective voltage between 0 and 9 volts. I use Autodesk Eagle to document the schematic after the prototyping was complete. I always do this. It helps me in many ways. One, I have a reproducible printout I can use to highlight my progress as I build the board. Also, I can reuse the circuit as a starting point for other circuits. I can lay out the board in 3D, I can send it off to a fab shop to get a PCB made instead of using a perf board, but last, it simply helps me remember what I did. It's a pain to reverse engineer from a perf board. Here's the final circuit. It's powered by a 9 volt battery. Transistors are used to power the motor and buzzer for the timer. With the printed schematic, we can quickly build the board. This is a very therapeutic task. It teaches you patience and enforces one to have a high attention to detail. I tested along the way to ensure there was no chance of short circuits. After everything checks out, I always put a conformal coating on the board. It insulates it to protect the exposed solder. Having the board assembled, we can now design a case around it. We use Autodesk Fusion 360. Here are some pro tips once you get the hang of it. Never delete a body or face. Instead, use the remove feature. This will preserve the timeline. When extruding your first sketch, have it make a new component versus just a body. For any bodies you have, be sure to make them components or move them into an existing component. Straight bodies look rookie. For parts that won't be printed, but are needed for sizing your printed part, only spend time on the detail you need or you'll just be wasting time. Often, you just need simple blocks or cylinders to serve as reference obstructions and cutting tools. For cutouts where components will be installed, chamfer the edges so the opening is wider on top. If your part will have text, be sure the font is large so the 3D printer can lay at least three rows of filament to make each character. Raise it at least one eighth inch off of the surface. Before modifying a body, consider modifying the sketch way back in the timeline that it created it instead. It makes undo look like a tiny baby feature. 3D printers can be bought for 300 bucks. If you don't own one, it's time to do your kids a favor. Assembly is the fun part. It's when the virtual world of 3D CAD comes to life. If you were diligent on measuring your shapes and your design, it will fit together like a glove. Unfortunately, I only had one knob for the potentiometers. The penetration for the servo was a little tight, which is preferred since I can always grind some back, but it's a pain to try to build it back up. Looks good. I like that. Oh yeah, we forgot to design in a penetration for the power switch. That's not a problem for a Dremel in a triangular file. Last, I soldered in the 9 volt battery cable. Here comes the gun show. The marshmallow stick was made of a 1 8 inch carbon steel rod. We didn't want it to slide the marshmallows down the whole thing, so we bent in a kick out that allows us to put them in the center. We then soldered on the two rods to serve as tongs. We used map gas and plumbing solder to do the job. We bent another rod to hold the other end. The last challenge was to link the stick to the rotisserie, 
So we 3D printed a special hub that screwed to a servo horn. The horn then screwed to the servo to center the stick on the output shaft of the motor. Last, we tested it. Mission accomplished. This was a fun little project. We found it could even be used with our grill for Cornish hens and kebabs. Visit Element 14 to see our blog to get the schematics, 3D files, parts list, and code to build yourself. Also, please like and subscribe.